When the tough times hit through the good and the bad, sports have always been there. We're talking playoffs? Yeah. We're talking playoffs? Playoffs? A rivalry renewed is now all of a sudden potentially a rivalry that will be settled this evening. Can you say deja vu as the Los Angeles Dodgers finding themselves in the exact same position they were in one year ago against the same team? For Cal Poly, they certainly have their hands full. This will be their biggest test of the season. Let's have a flashback here. Let's go to 1964. Also, the Tokyo. Olympics that featured a local athlete for Anna Van Bruman. Her life is slowly but surely returning back to normal. Nina, it was actually not. There were no COVID-19 cases. In fact, Cal Poly started the season because all of their players were healthy. That food, of course, is also going to the Santa Barbara County Food Bank. And on top of that, we have none other than our general manager from KSBY. This is Ed Chapuis. The Eagles trying to move on to the third round of the playoffs. We'll see if they do it tonight. Well, the full highlights for you as well on the Friday Night Highlights show. We've waited two years to truly get back out on the field. A clean 2019 season for high school football would hand off to one of the darkest years in recent memory in 2020, and the rest is history. Welcome to the first week of the playoffs on Friday Night Highlights. I'm Dusty Baker, and the high school football regular season brought us many highs from across the Central Coast. But tonight, all of that is in the past. Let's just say this entire game felt like it was an endless circle. I, I don't even know if Deja Vu by Olivia Rodrigo can explain explain how this feels. Well, if you're a baseball fan, you probably pay pretty close attention to the happenings surrounding the trade deadline. And you have Jeff Passan, you have Ken Rosenthal, and of course you have Dusty Baker Twitter alerts, right? Every year it's the same story with this team. Tons of talent, an inevitable playoff run, incredible fight, and also plenty of drama. Team USA has fared relatively well so far in Japan, but they do not find themselves at the top at the moment. So let's go to the action out there in Tokyo. Men's basketball, USA taking on Czech Republic. First quarter action. You may not remember this, but Damian Lillard part of the squad and he hits the three from deep and he drops that on the Czech Republic. USA at that time trailing by three, but second quarter Kevin Durant makes history shooting the triple from the wing and sinking it in to pass Carmelo Anthony. The Cowboys Mustangs last home game March 13th of this year against Southern Utah. That's right. They had the abbreviated season, but their last home game with fans November 16th of 2019 against Eastern Washington. Remember Eastern Washington, former head coach Bo Baldwin. This is his first time in front of a crowd, but first sticking the landing on the flyover. They did it right there. That was beautifully done. I could never do that. Cal Poly entering their home matchup against South Dakota. Let's go to the action first quarter action and it's South Dakota with the ball opening drive opening possession Mike Mansore here 13 yards to the end zone just like that seven nothing in favor of the Coyotes they weren't done there Carson Camp on his next drive hits Carter Bell in stride 54 big ones to the house it's 14 nothing Cal Poly's got their work cut out for them but Kalik Paulette here airs this one out he hits his man Michael Roth Roth shakes off a tackler down the sideline he goes tripped up at the 20 yard line that will set up one of the more unique plays you'll see from Paulette today Hey, play action, keeps it himself on the read, decides instead of running it, hits his man Chris Coleman, and he hits him in the corner of the end zone. Nine-yard strike, it's 14-7. Cal Poly's right back in the thick of things here, but Camp continuing to air it out, this time to Austin Gorig here. That's a 23-yard hit. First down, makes Mansoure take it one yard up the gut into the end zone. The Coyotes would put up 17 more points in the second quarter, taking a 41-7 lead into the half. Cal Poly falls this evening 48-14. That semifinal game will be against the winner of East Bakersfield or Morrow Bay. First quarter action, Nikki Johnson saying, you know what, let's try to get this thing going. He throws to his receiver who then airs it out to Merrill. That's a 60-yard gain. And how about this? Nathan Peck, 10 yards into the end zone for the score. It's 7-0 in favor of the Pirates, but on the other end, it's Aaron Ramos. Ramos keeping it himself. Four yards into the end zone. The Blades tied at 7, but second quarter, it's Johnson. He's treacherous, as some may say. Maybe Taylor Swift. Swiftly, they get it down the field, and that's a 40-yard gain for the score. It's 14-7, but Anthony Gonzalez on the other end saying, we are never getting back together, right? Well, they're getting it into the end zone for the score. However, they would fail on the two-point conversion to 
attempt. It's still 14-13 in favor of the Pirates. But Johnson, Johnson rolling out to his left. He says, you know what? We're going to do more than 22. I'm feeling more than 22. We're going to the end zone for 50. That's to Ethan Lisman. Makes it 21-13. to And Moro Bay wins it 36-33. to This was actually even more beautiful than Taylor Swift's 10-minute long no, song that she no just way. released. Meet Cameron Clapp, a 35-year-old Cal Poly student that will be graduating on Sunday right here at the football stadium. But one way or another, he's found the most unique path to get here by getting hit by a train 20 years ago and losing three limbs. This is unimaginable. Graduating, I was told I would never walk again. Cameron Clapp was a 15 year old boy that was underage drinking, leading to the most traumatic moments in his life. I don't remember my accident. Uh, it's probably a good thing because I'm sure it was pretty painful. Uh, but man, it, it was such a transformation. He lost both his legs above the knee, lost an arm at the shoulder. Like, really tragic, tragic situation. Against all odds, Cameron battled back. I'm totally independent. Um, I drive a car. You know, I live by myself. This guy is just made out of a different fabric. From swimming and surfing to giving speeches to war veterans and those going through the same trials he faced. Taking everything that I've been through um, and, and to, to give hope. Right, and show it's possible. And now with my graduation coming up on Sunday, that's a whole a new part of my story to share. These kids that have you know, blown up in Iraq and have a story to tell themselves, very much admired the courage that um, Cameron has. And now this weekend, Cameron is graduating from his dream school. Fast forward, here we are, and I'm, I'm walking on graduation. Uh, with two prosthetic computerized legs. He has been so in awe that he got in, number one, and then to graduate after these four years, he really made a big commitment to make it happen. Clap lived through the improbable, and now the impossible has happened. And I'm just so proud of him. My life today is, is a miracle. You might have noticed I used a Vince Scully quote there from the 1988 World Series in which Kurt Gibson made the improbable comeback with a walk-off home run. You could argue this is a more dramatic comeback for Cameron. He will be walking here on Sunday at Cal Poly, and just to be safe, he got a knee replacement earlier this afternoon. Reporting at Cal Poly, Dusty Baker, KSBY News. With the Olympics set to start on July the 23rd out in Tokyo, let's have a flashback here. Let's go to 1964, also the Tokyo Olympics that featured a local athlete who secured two gold medals, meet Michael Larrabee. I know what he did, but my father never talked about what he did. With all eyes set on Tokyo, the memories of Michael Larrabee's father and Shannon Larrabee's father-in-law, also named Michael Larrabee, once again return. He was one of the fastest people on the world at one time in the meters, which is one of our favorite uh, events to watch during the Olympics. Mike Larrabee, a USC Hall of Famer, is also the oldest man to have won the 400 meter title and the 4x400 relay at 30 years of age. He missed the prior two Olympics, so when he went to this one, he was almost 31 years old. He had pancreatitis and he had missed the other Olympics for Achilles heels problem. The stories I've heard are the stories about the sacrifices his family had to make. They moved in with his in-laws. He had two small children, one on the way, and at that time there was no money, there was no endorsement deals. The odds of Larrabee winning either race were incredibly low. He basically got it done on the qualification. When he went to qualify, he won the right to qualify. And at the time there was a New York sports writer who said, well, he may qualify, but he's injury prone and he's too old to run this race. To have his wife there to see him win the Olympics, and he put the medal around her neck after he won, and that got a bow from Emperor Hirohito at the time. And just that, you know, what they did as a family to get him there to pursue his dreams, the story we keep hearing, and the, the story we like to share. Larrabee grew up in Ventura with his son and daughter-in-law, now calling San Luis Obispo their home. But this summer, their hearts will be back in Tokyo for the new crop of Olympic athletes. They made a ton of sacrifices to get to that spot in their life. I think about all of our athletes who are going to be back there in Tokyo this year, 
and how hard they've worked to get there and to achieve their dream and do it under complete adverse circumstances. Larrabee used to hike the trails of Bishop Peak before he passed in April of 2003 and in his honor, a bench can be found along the trails. It touches my heart and something that stays with us, um, you know, years later. And while Mike may be gone, the medals he earned in 1964 continue to stand the test of time and keep his legacy alive in the Central Coast. Those medals mean the world to us. He was number one and as a small child I used to love to get the Guinness Book of World Record and take it to other kids during library time and show them hey this is my dad in the Guinness Book of World Record. He was the fastest guy in the world at one point. Behind me is the trail that leads to Bishop Peak and of course that's where you can also find Big Mike's Bench. Reporting at Bishop Peak, Dusty Baker, KSBY Sports.